This is Katie Nelson. I'm also known as Katie the Scrapbook Lady from scrapbookladypages.com and this is the third and final video in my series on why and how you should use a digital template. I've shown you how to put your pictures into a template, how to flatten them and save them as a JPEG and send them to the printer, and now I just want to go over some of the ideas for customizing these designs and making them your own finding the joy in adding what you would like to represent from your own life. There are so many possibilities and I think that you will really enjoy using a template when you scrap. If you go to my blog and in the top menu click on page gallery, you'll always see a collection of pages that I have posted. These are my own personal layouts and these images will change from time to time because this page always reflects the newest image posted for each of these categories. So you can explore each of these categories. Just simply click on it and scroll down and you'll see different layouts. I try to link to supplies where possible to help you with your own shopping and finding what you would like to use. So you can simply scroll through and look at the different layouts. Each category also has an inspirational quote and then some of the ideas that I have about scrapbooking and some of my tips and tricks. So be sure to check out each category. If you click on each one they're all different and there are different little tips for each area. So that will give you hopefully a lot of ideas as you look through but I also want to show you some of the other things that you might want to consider when you're getting ready to do pages. So all of these are basic grid layouts but I include different things each time. I will use cards that are prepared by digital designers. Sometimes I find, I find free downloads on the internet or I'll take screenshots from apps or different classes, different things that I'm involved in. I'll just show you a couple of examples here on this one. I used a screenshot from my weather app. I will do journaling right on the photos. Sometimes I'll use photo collages. I love to use little calendars. I will scan items from our everyday life to put in these layouts. And you can see I try to keep a good variety going. These are cards from an app called Collect Photo App for iPhone where you put in your photo of the day and a little bit about it. So be sure to include a variety from your life. You can keep it as simple or complex as you want. There are no rules on this. Uh, I take photos of signs and use them as pictures. I just try to include a lot of different things. And you can see on all of these layouts that I've just shown you, everything fits within the photo spaces. This is a type of scrapbooking often referred to as pocket scrapping or grid style scrapping. But if you're interested in adding other items, I'm going to show you how to do that too. So what you can do, say if you want to use the grids or the photo spaces, and then add something on top of that. That's the beauty of being able to work in layers in a program like Photoshop Elements. You can, I'll show you a few more examples. Here's a basic layout where I've added a banner, some word strips, a tag, and a leaf. These are all from a digital designer. Here's one where I used photos and uh, pictures of signs and then I added just a little lace banner and this one another banner I really love banners and so let me just show you an example so this layout I've been showing you in the other two videos is just filled with journaling cards and um, title cards journaling photos pretty basic things if I want to add something else on top, get a more layered look, or more traditional digital scrapbooking, I can open up a folder of embellishments. This one is from a designer named Kristen Cronin Barrow. And I can pick something that I would want to use. So here's a piece of word art. I would just open that up in the program the same way that I did with photos earlier. I would take that piece 
and I would drag it and make sure it was on top of the photo I wanted to use it on. So I could do something like that. Say I wanted to add something a little more dimensional. I'm going to take this Bon Voyage piece of word art and I'm going to put it into the layout. Um, I will resize that a little bit. There are several different places I could put this. I'm just playing with it right now. Now if I wanted to give that a little bit of shadowing, one trick I could do, because it's similar to a photo, is I could go here and I could copy the layer style that was already included in the template, and then I could paste that layer style right onto that piece and give it the same shadowing that the rest of the template had. It also doesn't have to fit right on that spot. You could use it to overlap. You can put flowers on top or digital buttons, whatever you want to do. The nice thing is you can turn off layers that you don't want to show. If you didn't want shadowing on your layout, you could simply clear the layer styles and have a more flattened look. So if you see what I'm doing there, you'll see that this section is a more flattened kind of graphic look where this one has a little bit of dimension with the shadows. Totally up to you on what you like to do and up to you whether you want to fill every space with photos or you want to fill a lot of spaces with fun little cards and designs or you want to put more embellishments on top. The choice is yours on this completely and I think you'll find that these very basic templates have a lot of use in them. It would be very easy to make an entire photo book out of just one set of these templates. But the nice thing is that you can mix and match them as well. I have designed my templates to work well with each other. So if you want to go into and work with the sections templates and then maybe on the opposite page have one of the segments templates. They work very nicely together. Lots of options, lots of fun stuff to do when you're working with digital templates. Anyway, thank you for watching these videos. I hope that these have answered a lot of questions for you and that the post that they're in will also help illustrate some of the many ways that digital scrapbooking is easy. I promise it is. Some people get very overwhelmed at the thought of it and it's simply a matter of opening up files and dragging them into place. I can't think of what could be easier. Thanks for joining me.